Hey guys, Nick here. In this video, we're going to introduce how to call into smart contracts and change the state of the smart contract. We're going to illustrate how to transfer an ERC20 token from one address to another. So just to kind of quickly recap, I'm here on Stack Starter. I'm going to go ahead and dive into our environment here. And in the last video, what we did was we introduced the idea of using a library called Ethers to call into smart contracts. And we introduced the three core things that you need in order to call into a smart contract on the Ethereum blockchain. Merry call, those three things are, let's go ahead and dive right into our JavaScript here. We wrote this little function that checks the token balance. And in order to create a new contract in, in object-oriented terms, we would say instantiate a contract. Here we use this ethers.contract object, and we pass in three pieces of information that we need. The first is the actual address of the contract itself. So in this case, we put it into a nice little variable called libc address, and you can see there, there that's the value of the address. Then we need the actual ABI or the application binary interface. And that is this big object here that has basically it defines all of the inputs and the outputs and the names of the methods that are inside of the smart contract it really defines the interface for us for the smart contract. And then the third piece is the actual provider. Now the provider is going to be basically your wallet. Right, and we this this object here is something we, we defined on page load all the way up here. We go all the way up here, and where are we here? Whoa! If you go right here, we basically use this ethers.providers web3 provider, and we passed into that constructor here for this object the window.ethereum provider. Now the window.ethereum as we've been using throughout the series of videos is our Ethereum object that MetaMask injects into our browser window so that we can we can actually communicate with Ethereum. So awesome. So this this is all working well. We have this really basic interface here that allows us to connect a wallet. We can check our Ethereum balance. We can send a transaction that contains ETH. And then in the last video, we showed you how you can check your balance within a smart contract. So if we click this, you're gonna see that we have this really big number here, which represents the balance of our wallet um, with this specific ERC20 token. So if we look at our, uh, at our wallet here in MetaMask, you can see that here is the LIBC balance that I have. So just backing up for a quick minute here, we are talking about an ERC-20 token contract. And we're using that as kind of the standard uh, example for how we can integrate with a smart contract. The, the skills that you're learning in these videos are transferable to other types of smart contracts, but there may be different functions that we're calling into uh, when we're interacting with those contracts. So with that being said, the next piece of this is going to be calling into a smart contract that is actually changing the state of the contract. So if we're maybe transferring some tokens from this wallet to another wallet, that would be changing the state. Now, as you may know, when we, whenever we change state within a smart contract, that is going to be a transaction on the network. So it's, it's not like what we did previously, which is just a read only call, we're just saying, hey, I want to look at what's inside the smart contract. Now we're saying, hey, I want to change what's inside the smart contract. Now, in order to change information inside of the smart contract, we do need to pay gas because we need to mine a new transaction on the network. So we do need it will cost actual ether to be able to do this because we are changing the information inside the contract. We're changing the actual blockchain. And that's going to, we have to incentivize the, the miners out there to include our transaction in the next block. So we, we have to include gas to be able to do that. Now, I'm not going to go too much into gas. I think in a previous video, I did 
I did go into a bit of an explanation about what gas is and what it represents, uh, but basically it's going to be something we need to include in the transaction to get the state or the information inside of the contract changed. All right, cool. So let's see what this is gonna look like. So the goal here is I wanna be able to click a button and have that button kick off a transaction that will transfer some amount of LIBC token, which we have here, to a different account. So you can see here, this, this account has a ton of LIBC, but if we switch over to this account, we only have one LIBC. Now we are working on the Gorelli test network, so this isn't live ETH. Um, so this is all this is all going down on the test network, and we want to make this maybe make this bigger, maybe maybe make this two LIBC. So we're going to go ahead and create a button and then have it send a transaction from this account to the other account of just one LIBC. So what is that going to look like? Let's go ahead and dive right into our JavaScript here, and what we're going to want to do is it's going to look a lot like this last function we, we wrote, which is the read only function, but there's going to be a couple of little, little changes to this. So let's go ahead and let's write a new function here. We're going to say const, let's call it, no, we're not going to call it check token balance. We're going to call it, um, what do we want to call it? Let's call it transfer token. And this is gonna be an async function, just like all the other functions we've been writing in this series, because we're gonna use promises, because these transactions and a lot of these calls into Ethereum are asynchronous. So we're gonna to need to instantiate this contract object again. So let's go ahead and do the same thing we did above. Now, in a larger application, we probably wouldn't do this multiple times, but we're practicing and we're learning, so let's go ahead and get a little bit of that muscle memory going on. So we're gonna say, let LIBC contract equal new ethers.contract. And we're gonna give it the same three things that we need. Now, what are those things again? We need the address of the contract, the ABI, which we have in a nice little variable, and the provider. Now, there is a difference here. And this, I think, is a little unique to ethers is that the third parameter here, we can give it just the provider, but when we give it just the provider, that is locking us in to only be able to call read-only methods on this contract. So that's why up here, we can go ahead and use the provider and still call this balance of method, but we're not gonna be able to do that down here because we need to be able to change the state. So if we jump over to the, um, the documentation here on ethers, which I'll link in the in the notes below, uh, you can see here that the by passing in a provider, it will return a downgraded contract which only has read-only access. Okay, so we have to pass in a signer, and this will return a contract which will act on behalf of that signer. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so we need to pass in a signer. It's pretty simple to do that. The provider all, already has a method to go ahead and grab that. So all we have to do is say provider.getSigner and boom, that's gonna go ahead and return the signer. That's basically saying that, hey, we're gonna use the accounts that are connected, the current account, as the account that we're gonna sign the transaction to send to the network. And that's a key point of how the, a lot of this stuff works is that we need to take our private key and sign the transaction to be minted into the blockchain. So we're gonna be using that information to actually ver sign the transaction so it'll, it'll be sent up. Okay, so now with that in place, we now can use this contract in a little bit of a different way. Now, let's go ahead first and let's just create a variable. We'll create a constant variable called amount. And we're gonna use ethers.utils. So we're gonna use a little utility function called parse units. And this is gonna go ahead and convert the number one to go out to 18 digits. So we're kind of just making this, this big number object here that's gonna enable us to have the representation of the number one, but make it go out to 18 digits because the LIBC token, like a lot of tokens on Ethereum and Ethereum Ether itself goes out to 
18 digits. So it's a big number, and that does actually extend the bounds of the an integer within JavaScript. So we kind of need to use some of these funky functions to convert strings to numbers and back and forth and things like that. So this is going to enable us to just pass in an amount that represents just one. Pretty simple. Now we can get a little crazy. So now what we're gonna do is we'll say let TX, we'll just call it a transaction, equals await. And now we're gonna use that LIBC contract and we're gonna call into the transfer method. Now the transfer method that we're using here is part of the standard. So if we go and pop over to the standard here, let me zoom in a little bit, you'll see here that the transfer method is a method that's going to allow us to transfer some token within this contract to an address. So you can see here that it takes two parameters, the address and two, and then a value. Okay, so that's pretty much it. That's all we need to do. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to go transfer. And now we're going to transfer to this second address here. So I'm going to go ahead and bounce to this address, to this address here, copy this, and we'll go back to this other address. So we're on this one. And I'm going to say transfer to this address and comma amount. Awesome. So that is it. So now with that in place, we can we can console.log the transaction, which maybe we'll do that. We'll go ahead and console.log tx and we'll see a, a, a object. We can manipulate and scrutinize this object after it comes back and you'll see it on the uh, console. But now we should have everything we need in order to call in and create a transaction uh, and then try to publish it to the, to the actual network. But we do need one thing. We need to add a button to our UI, our, our complicated, beautiful UI here. So let's go ahead and go to our HTML and let's add a button here. So I'm gonna say button and we're gonna say on click. And when we click it, we're gonna go ahead and call transfer token. And we'll say transfer LIBC. All right, so now if we go to the this beautiful interface, we now have a new button. It says transfer LIBC. Now this is gonna call into that function and let's see if we got it on our first try. Boom, transfer, boom, there we go. So look at that. Now MetaMask popped and it does have a transaction set up for us that we can now confirm. It's gonna transfer one LIBC and let's go ahead and confirm it. Boom. Now you can see here that we did get this transaction hash and we could see all of the information pertaining to this transaction. So this is a, a typical transaction object. It has the chain ID in it. It has where it's from. Um, it has any data that's inside of it. It has where it's to, has a nonce, all the information that you're gonna need within the actual transaction. Now, if we go ahead and look at MetaMask and we look at the activity, looks like the transaction was already confirmed. So let's go ahead and go to this live account and look at our assets and boom, now we have two LIBC. There we go, we did it guys. So now we actually interacted with a smart contract on two different levels. We, we interacted, it, interacted with a smart contract by just reading values inside of it. And then we actually changed values inside of that smart contract by just transferring tokens from one address to another. Now this did cost gas, and that's, that's, that, that's very frequently a question that people get: is how how do we know how much gas this is going to cost, and how much um, you know how much is it going to cost to actually transact on the network? And that's a reasonable question. Luckily, the Ethers library does have a pretty easy way for us to estimate the gas before we send it. And I'll just quickly show this off before we end this screencast. So let's go back to our JavaScript, and let's say. We wanted to estimate how much it would cost in gas to be able to actually execute this, this, this um, function call. All we have to do is on the contract here, we're gonna say dot estimate gas dot, and then the name of the method that we're estimating the gas to. So all we did was we added this estimate gas right here. Now, this transaction is going to be a big number when it comes back. It's going to be a big number object. So all we have to do is say transfer.to string 
And now when we hit the button, let's see what happens. Let's go back here and let's click transfer LIBC. And boom, it's not gonna fire off a transaction, but it did write out a value here. And this value is how much GUE, in the unit GUE, it will cost in gas to make this transaction happen. And right now, each unit of gas, if we look at, it's probably ridiculously expensive right now because gas is very expensive at the moment. Um, each unit of gas, I went down a little bit today, is around 173 GUE. So if you multiply that times, the amount we get here, that's what you would uh, would be paying in Ether to make this transaction happen. Um, so yeah, that's it. So that's that's a good way for you to actually estimate how much it's going to cost to send the transaction. And you could you could use this value to then put it into the parameters of the function. And maybe we'll we'll get into that in later videos. But for now, we have a way now to not only read the values of contracts, but also call into and estimate the cost of using these contracts and changing the state of the contracts themselves. So this is pretty powerful stuff, guys. We could do a lot of stuff with this. Um, there are a lot of really interesting contracts out there that you can play with. Just today, I think Uniswap V3 just hit the test nets. All of the addresses were published. So you can use this type of knowledge to go ahead and start to play with those before there's even a user interface on top of them. Um, so this is kind of giving you those superpowers to go ahead and play with the technology before it's kind of... Uh, you know, easier for people that can't do this stuff to access it. So I hope that the, you guys are getting value out of these videos. If you have any questions, please post them into the comments. If you're enjoying this content, please subscribe. And um, we're trying to do these as often as we can. We're trying to put up, put on as many events as we can here in Long Island Blockchain. So thanks guys for watching. Until next time, um, have fun.